Hello. Can you hear me? Can you type something here? Hello. Write your name, your location. We're gonna start soon. I'm just waiting for a couple of minutes to see if uh, someone else join in. And then we go start. I hope you can hear my voice and you can you can hear the bass. Yes. I can't really read what you, if you write, wrote something in the chat. I couldn't see it. I can see. Oh, let me check. I can see any anyone here. Anyway, let's start. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Marco. I'm from Italy, and I play the bass, and I'm a music enthusiast. I privately teach bass and guitar and run my YouTube channel where I make free lessons and then I show my stuff. Okay. I love to talk about music to people and to teach it. And it's so uh, that's the reason why I'm making this my this is my first uh, streaming. Well, it's actually the second one. Uh, some of you uh, probably uh check it for the previous one but it ended up that uh, nobody was there just one people and uh, we ended up talking about nothing so i i did uh, delete the 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 stream now i'm gonna make it uh, very straight to the point and and go all uh, through all the the stuff that the the, the lesson is uh, about and today we're going to cover uh, uh, a subject about the major scale and why is it so important to learn it, especially for those who don't know anything about scales. Okay, I've been in that situation, and everyone, every player, have been in this certain point of their life. They don't, they didn't know what scale was, what a scale, what a scale was, and we see how to build the major scale and how to play on the bass or even on a guitar, even uh, on, on the guitar, because the first four string, the, the top four string of the guitar are the same as the bass. And the last two are just uh, tuned a half step uh, higher. So it would be, very easy to uh, to transpose this lesson to a, a guitar one just remember when you reach the the lower uh, the lower thing to move a little bit uh, ahead okay well you ready uh, I wrote down some milestones on my computer so uh, sometime I'm going to read uh, on the computer and as you see I've been injured a little bit, uh, but, but I can quite mm, play, not that much, but uh, I can do uh, some stuff. So let's start by analyzing the main reasons why the major scale is important. Okay. The first one is that understanding the major scale is essential for building chords and harmonies 
and bass lines. The course you probably learned if you play a little bit the guitar on, on a tab or uh, on a piano, have a common schema to be built. Okay, and knowing the major scale will give you the chance to start to understand the logic behind it, the name of any chord and easily get that music colors you are missing on your bass or on in your melody or even when you play uh, the guitar or the piano. Okay, the first part of the lesson is really about uh, uh, how the, the, the major scale is built. So it's good for every instrument you're going to play. Okay. Second reason, the major scale is the most commonly used scale in all genres of music. 99% of the music we listen to is based on the major scale or its relative minor that basically uses the same notes. Okay. Another reason is that it is a great way to build the finger strength and dexterity on your on your uh, bass or on your guitar or even on the on the piano even if the, on the piano you, you you have to go through other technical stuff okay it means that uh, there are a lot of way to practice the scales and each of these uh, each of these exercises will let you learn like the syllabus of the music, of the musical phrases. You know, it's, music is a language and uh, you have to learn the little, like the language, the words are made by syllabus and you have to learn the syllabus before you have to learn, you can learn words and phrases and the major scale will give you the chance to to work on this uh, syllabus okay and they are really fun to play because you you start making making some music okay next uh, it helps you to play by ear that is essential for improvisation and mastering the major scale will give you the basic ear reference for relative pitch which mean which means you can understand in a faster way what note you are listening to or thinking about okay you think a note and okay that's a fifth that's i know that if i hear it in my in my mind i can play and it's magic okay and uh, uh and so you can play at first your your instrument you 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 think about a melody but up but you play okay next next reason is that being familiar with a major scale can help you learn other scale more quickly it's a it's a basic stuff the major scale uh, is so important because all other scales refers to it now why do you have to to learn other scales but that's the thing you you probably will do in the next month or maybe years i don't know well each scale has a different color and feeling you probably heard about the major and minor chords okay and they have built over a major scale or a minor scale so you you can feel the difference between a major and minor chord if you can do it you would feel the difference between the major scale and the minor scale they just differ by differ by one note okay but there are also other notes that can change from one scale to the other and they give you specific colors to the music and feeling okay so in your musical journey, you'll have to face other scale, one day or another. And to get there, you have to know the major scale because all of them could be defined in terms of differences from it. And so if you learn the major scale, it would be really easier 
to learn and remember the new scale you're going to to learn okay our brain works works better at understanding things by difference from what we already know so major scale is the very basic and it's so important because it's the starting point of all the scales and all the sounds okay last reason but we can probably find many other okay but i i wrote down uh, these six points that to me are the most uh, important okay the, the major scale is the foundation of western music theory all the theory needs you to know the major scale i'm not talking about learning to read or write music on a, on a, on a, on a, on a sheet of paper okay all the theory is explained with references to the major scale okay it, we, we talk about minor uh minor intervals we're talking about intervals that is the distance between the notes uh in a scale uh we, all the theory to understand and everything uh, theoretical you have to understand the major scale okay it's like the syllabus for children when they learn to theory okay in first grade school they the, the first thing they do is writing down of course but they can already speak and they uh, and they start by syllabus okay because if they couldn't speak with syllabus or write down yes it's of course it's a be able to write and to read music it's a good tool for music theory but it's not the theory okay you should learn read and write music but it's not you, you don't have to read uh, at first sight okay or play at first sight you don't need it you you need to communicate okay well uh the major scale is the key to open to you all the door doors of music theory okay if you don't know how the major scale works you can really raise your music knowledge to that level where you could do the same stuff you are doing now but way faster okay getting better at playing means that whatever you are doing right now if you're playing just or oh, one and fifth one and five okay you can understand well understand what it what that the thing is and you give it a name or uh, it comes you, you memorize it is that it as a concept and you will you can use it uh, later in your uh, new new stuff and you can uh, you can learn music faster okay and understanding the basics of the theory of the music language it will give you the chance to communicate with other musicians in the same language which means you can learn new stuff from others by just by talking with them and if you are going to play uh, with someone that is better than you okay it always happened to me uh i can talk to them and they can talk to me oh do this this stuff and they they speak with with a musical technical language if i couldn't understand them i can get what they are really telling me okay well now we know you know <laughs> I, I knew it before uh why the major scale is very important and probably you've been told uh, that it's it's a lot of you need a lot of work to master it well i can agree with that but in some way i don't well there are a lot of tutorials about the major scale you can find them on the internet it's very easy to to get whatever but 
where can you start from you if you start just by oh the, this is the major scale you can play it like this it won't be a good point starting point okay let me tell you that i've been in, the, in that identical same situation i spent a lot of time hoping that somehow i could get how to know the scale without any effort at all so i didn't put any real intention to learn them and it happened that i didn't really learn them okay until i convinced myself that even if that looks so hard so a huge amount of work i had to do it so i start studying but without having a clear vision of what to study first it took me quite a lot to get it done but only then when i look back at what i just studied and the the amount of work I, I put in, in that study, I realized that it would have been way easier if only I had the, all the information I needed re ready and available in the correct order. And all these, those notions were really easy if taken in little chunk, one after the other. So what I really what I really want to give to you with this lesson is the complete path made of every small and easy concept to understand what is the major scale and how to start to get it on your base at different levels. Of course, we need some theoretical stuff, but they won't be the ones that you probably think you know. It won't, I won't go to reading and writing music, but we will focus on the very basic of what the scale is and how it sounds ready so let's get some very basic theory and definition i promise i'll be very short on this well what half tones and tones are in our musical system we have subdivided the space between one note and the same note at uh, its higher uh, ne next higher pitch its octave in 12 equally sounding smaller intervals that we call semitones, half tones, half step, whatever you want. Okay. And a couple of consecutive semitones or half tones or half step is what we call tone. So we got, uh, well, playing the tones resulting from this subdivision lead us to get 12 different notes going from the one with a lower pitch that we call root to its octave okay we have uh i can start from any note and uh, uh, i i let you listen each of these is an half tone okay I just made 12 half tones from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And this note here is the same note here. Okay. And we subdivided it in this root to octave in 12 equally sounding spaces. They're not equally in space really because this one are smaller than this because uh frequency uh changes in in a different way but what we what arrived to our ears is that this space is the same here you feel okay so this is the only concept you need to understand what a scale is a scale is just an ordered ascending or descending sequence of some or even all of these sounds from one note to its octave. And you can easily get that what makes a scale sound different one from another are the number of notes it contains and the spaces between them, okay? And these two characteristics make 
each scale sound uniquely and usually we give them a name to identify them okay and yes the 12 note sequence we've played before is a scale and its name is a is chromatic scales and it contains 12 notes each separated by semitone let's get closer to the major scale what a major scale is and how we can get it the two characteristic of the most used major scale that is also known as the ionian mode are that one it's a heptatonic scale that it means it has seven notes hepta means seven and the space is between each of these seven notes is defined by specific sequence of tones and semitones and this sequence is tone tone semitone tone 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 semitone tone tone semitone tone 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 semitone okay this is the very first thing you have to uh memorize okay so we start from a root any root any root note we want we started from a c this is a c but we can start it from any, anywhere and we add a tone so two semitone and we have the second note then we have we add another tone remember tone tone semitone so uh, tone i add another tone and got the third note tone tone semitone so i'm adding a semitone here not more not anymore anymore a tone then tone 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 so and at last we add a semitone to get to the octave tone tone semitone tone 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 semitone okay now you have to get familiar with this sequence as you have to know it by her tone 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 semitone tone 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 semitone tone tone half tone 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 half tone whatever you want tone tone semitone tone 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 semitone okay now that's the end of theory okay any question if you have any question you can write it in the comment and now we're going to see how to play the major scale on our bass okay now uh the first thing we need is to visualize the scale on a single string as much as we uh, did it uh, a second ago okay I'm just turning the camera a little bit here okay so every time we um, you, you probably know but maybe someone of you don't uh, as you probably know when press each of these fret shorten the length of the the string so that the frequency at it at which it vibrates change to exactly match the frequency that represent every note of our musical system okay and each one is separated by a half tone a semitone so the easiest way to play a scale is to apply its specific sequence of tones and semitones tone tone semitones tone 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 semitones for the major scale along one single string on the neck starting from any root as we did before uh major scale tone semitones uh, pattern is tone tone semitone tone 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 semitone okay let's start from here from our root and we can play this is our c and we can play the root we are the semitone we are the semitone we are the half tone oh sorry we are the, a tone a tone a semitone a tone a tone a tone and a semitone and we are back to the octave we, we already see it but it's better to really get into this okay and this is the easiest way to play the major scale and 
and back. Okay, of course, you should probably practice this a little bit to be sure you really got it and mm, memorize the sequence. So spend something like five, ten minutes a day for two or three consecutive days, and it, you should be okay. And this will help you to fix the pattern I told you, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone in your memory and get used to the sound of the note sequence. Okay, now for better result, you could name the ordinal number of the notes while playing them. So uh, you will better associate that uh, there are are only two semitone spaces and they are between the notes three and four and between the notes seven and eight okay so one two three between three and four just one semitone four five six seven between seven and eight there is one semitone one two three four five six seven eight okay you don't need to do it fast you only need to learn the sequence and listen to the notes if you like you can also sing the number okay like i done right now one two three four five six seven eight seven six five four three two one okay let's go further on and explore this three fingers fingering concept okay now as you can imagine it's very uncomfortable for anyone to play the scale on a single string like we just uh we just made i just made okay with one finger well it's not ergonomic and moving all the arm along the the neck uh, uh, it wouldn't result in big really fast uh, accurate and smooth okay and so this is why we need to talk about uh, using fingerings okay in fact the way you use your fingers to play the note could improve a lot the speed of the and the flowness you can play them okay let's see what i'm talking about now if we consider any three consecutive notes they would have two spaces separating them okay i take just one two and three note this is a note this is another note and this is another note we have a space between this okay i'm playing here and here so there is this semitone space and from here to here there is one semitone and from here to here there is another semitone so there are two spaces in this case two semitone spaces okay now you can check this in the major scale these spaces could only be one of these three combinations i'm telling you tone 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 semitone semitone tone okay we never go to the semitone semitone combination i've showed you before because in the major scale pattern remember tone tone semitone tone 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 semitone there are no adjacent semitones between notes okay so let, uh, let's see again how these three note groups looks looks like on the neck so i say tone tone three notes separate each separated by a tone in between the first and the second and another tone between the second and the third let's start from the c if i if you like i played with one one finger okay this is the first combination or the second one is semitone tone I hope you can see. I probably can switch camera a little bit, like uh, this one. Maybe you can see better. Okay. And the other one is tone, semitone, tone, and semitone. 
okay? If you go check uh, all the tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, you could all, and take three of these notes, you will find only one of these three fingering. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, tone, semitone, okay? Now, these three fingers are very comfortable for our fingering, for, for our fingers, and we can use them to play the notes in group of three, okay? Uh, on the same string, I can use, I can go like this, one, two, three, and play the other one with the same pattern. So, tone, tone, then I go here with a semitone, and then play another tone, tone, another tone, and go up to the octave. So you see, I'm not moving my arms seven times. I'm just moving it one and two times, okay? So, and plus, we can use these three same fingerings to start from any note of the scale. So, whatever note, whatever finger we start in the scale, I just started with the index, this, but I can start with the middle finger, okay? Tone, another tone, semitone. Tone, and this is the other finger in position, and this is the other finger position. You see, if I start from the C, from the from the sorry, from the B, B, C, D, seven, one, two is the number of the note on the scale. Seven, one, two. You see this figure, half tone, tone. One, two, three, four, five, half tone, tone. Then start from here. That is a tone. Third tone. And half tone, I'm going back to the octave. Okay? So, uh, you probably, if, if you're trying to do this, you're... You, you're feeling a little uncomfortable with this finger in position, uh, or probably you have probably made the string sounds good. You can check another video I made about how to really control your finger over the neck. Okay, it's a, it's a really good lesson on how to put your finger where to put, how to play uh, the notes. This, this is how to make sounds on the on the on the guitar or, or on the bass. Okay, it's really important you you check it if you are having this kind of problem. You can find the link somewhere down here or in uh, in some of my playlists. Okay, you can check uh, how to really control your fingers over the neck. If you need it, if you find you can't play good quality sounding notes, it's a good idea to put this exercise I'm telling you in your daily practice routine and at some minute, not very much of this exercise uh, before practicing the one I'm going to show you right now to, to, to master the, the, the major scales. Okay. Uh, remember, always remember that it's uh, way better to practice a little bit every day than say three hours on a single day so you know in all the week so split your time your practicing time along all the week okay maybe not all the week but say four days a week three days a week but do it constantly okay uh now do this exercise I'm, I'm telling you for 10, 15 minutes a day for a few days, and you will get this 
uh, dexterity on your on your fingers. Okay. Now we're going to play all the all the the, the notes in group of three, starting from uh, uh, from the B. Okay, we we can play it from here from the third string, second fret. And this is the B, C, and D. Okay. Then you play C, D, and E. Then you play D, E, F, D, e, F, G, F, G, A, G, A, B. A, B, C. Okay? So, B, C, D, C, D, E, D, E, F. Oops, sorry. D, E, F, E, F, G, F, G, A, G, A, B. A, B, C. Um, I have to think about the name of the of the uh, of the notes of course because it's not my natural language okay well as you probably notice some of the finger patterns repeat and they are all that one of the three we saw before the tone 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 semitone or semitone tone Okay, so practice this. Practice this five, ten minutes a day uh, along the week, and you you will get this finger in, in your uh, in your uh, muscle memory. Okay, you 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 could make it very. Uh, smooth, smoothly okay now uh, when you play especially this this position it's over five frets so it's very stretching but you don't have to stretch it uh, a lot you can play like this uh, and then move the finger and play it with the little finger each finger has a, a, a fret associated but I can move. If I want to play this, I have to play with the index. Okay. And if I want to play this, I have to play it with a little finger. Okay. Now, uh, go it, do it very slowly and uh, uh, take your time to learn these three uh, fingerings. Now, uh, we start from playing the notes with one finger, then we move and play by moving the arm just two times. Is there a better way to do it? And can we do it without moving the arm at all? Is it possible? Yes, it is. But to understand how it works, I first need to show you something I call the, the a capo concept. A capo means something like back to the beginning of the line when you're reading a text. Uh, I don't know what's the name for this thing in, in, in English. And uh, I applied this name to this concept because it's very similar on the bass. I don't know if someone gave it a name or if it has a name. Uh, specific name i've never been taught this concept by anyone but i find it very useful to my students to get to the point where i'm leading them okay so uh now as you probably know on a bass every string is tuned on a different note so it happened that the same note could be found in different places on the neck 
over the different string. This note here, the C, can be found here, and it's the same, the very same note. And this one, okay, can be found, oh, sorry. Okay, it can be found here, and here, and here on the higher pitch, okay? And this is because this, uh, this note here is the same as here because the 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 way the bass is tuned is a sorry e a d and g these are the name of the the notes they're tuned the strings are tuned so as this note here is the same um, this one played with the first the fourth string is the same of the third string played with no with not fingering it's like i'm pushing here okay and as of this we can use this feature like an, an a capo so i can play the notes and instead of playing this note here i can play the next the same note on the next string that's the same okay it's, it works on, on all the string and this is very useful to us as we can play our scale without moving the hand across the neck as we can play three note groups uh, the three note groups the next three note groups on the next string and all we need to know now is to master where the next group start on the next string on the lower string so to get that we have to know that the distance between the notes uh, the bass is tuned is always the same as a tool as you could imagine okay and it's five semitones on standard bass tuning that is e a d g e a d g okay now uh to get from the sound of the fourth string this is the fourth string that is an e to the sound of the third string that is an a on the same string we have to go across this amount of semitones e one semitone two three four five and we have the same note of the second of the third string okay you can hear it's the same okay now it's five semitones it's easy the same same very very same thing is goes from the a to d this one is the same as the one this one and the same from this to this okay and we can apply this the same rule all over all, all over the strings okay and the rule is that you can always find the same note on the lower string five semitones back on the neck so if i'm playing this note oh well i, I can play this note here where where can i find it on the on the next string i go to the lower string and count one two three four five and this is the same okay that's very easy five step back and one down or one down and five back it's the same thing okay so uh let's go practical and uh, uh let's see what happened if we play our uh, c major scale uh, starting with uh, our index okay as we do before okay this is what we have done before one two three four five six seven and eight okay 
one, two, three, the next note I have to play is this, is the fourth note of the scale. Okay, where can I find this note on the lower string? I go down and one, two, three, four, five. This note is the same. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It sounds like magic. Three, four, five, six. Remember this position, it's the one with the two tones in the middle of the, the three notes. So one, two, three, down, and now I apply the same tone tone pattern. Okay. Then I jump one tone and play the two notes separated by a semitone and the next one would be another D on the higher pitch okay so two three five six seven no sorry one two three five one two three four five six now from six to seven if you were if you remember we have one step okay same thing we, we were doing here we jump one tone 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 and semitone so where is this note the seventh note of the scale on the lower string one down and one two three four five here remember it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is the octave. It's the same note. You get it? So it's very, it's very useful. I don't have to move my hand. Okay, just the finger. As you can imagine, you, you have to work a little bit on this too, okay? Uh, and But after a week or two, you can, uh, uh, you can get it fluent, okay? You can get it smooth. And as I told you before, this, this movement is a little bit stretching, especially in this part of the neck where the spaces are very wide okay if i were here it would be easier because the space is less is lower it's thinner oh well whatever so we can really move a little bit the hand to reach to easily reach okay okay you can do it in two different way i i do it like this i play the first and the second one with the index and the ring finger and then move my hand a little bit a half step up and play the little finger okay and when i come back i used to play the little finger the index the, the middle finger and then move with the index finger okay i prefer it like this but you could prefer it a different way like uh, the opposite so moving uh, play the, the the first note with the index then move and play with the middle and then with the with the little finger so okay and do the same when you come back or do the opposite you could do whatever you want but you have to train it you have to work on this a little bit and find your way to make this movement and practice only that that movement you're making don't mix stuff don't make one it one one time you, you use a one finger in the other one, the other fingering, because your brain would go mad. 
okay you have to memorize these steps you, you don't have to to think about okay you don't have to do it. you don't have to think about the movement it, it it's like a program in your muscle memory you memorize it and you don't even think it's like when you walk when you walk you don't think to the movement of your uh of your legs but you only think where you want to go i want to go there and your feet moves automatically to bring you there the same is same goes here okay so uh at first first time do it very slow without a metronome you, i know everyone say learn it with a metronome always study with a metronome yes it's true but not in the very beginning of an, an exercise you have to you have to be confident of the movement you have to uh, do to your fingers you have to in the very beginning you don't well brain learns by repetition and by good repetition if you repeat a thing in the wrong way your brain learns it the wrong way so you have to do it the most as much as you can right and to do it right you can do it at high speed or at tempo at first because you have to think about the tempo too no believe me uh, uh, i experimented it in all my life okay so put the metronome away and think about the movement you have to do and when you really know what the movement are so and you you can play with no error even with no metronome okay then only then when you you're sure you're okay these are the place where i have to put my finger and i can use them i can put the fingers on the on the neck then put on the metronome at a very very slow tempo okay you will find yourself struggling with the because when you put in tempo in your practicing you are adding a layer of complexity so you have to think to your finger position and to play it on time that is another level of things okay so you have to master a little bit put it they say glacially glacially slow or deadly slow okay like this to okay like this and then when you can do it at a slow tempo for say four or five thing five times uh, uh straight well put the metronome a little bit higher five not more five bpms more okay so uh i will have pro i will probably have to leave in about uh, 20 minutes i will try to go very fast and uh if i can't really uh close the the lesson i will promise you i will make another uh or another um, stream or another lesson or complete lesson with all the things i said today okay so let's go further on uh so uh what happened to our a capo if we're not starting with what our index position <laughs> okay say we start as we do as we did before with the middle finger the next one should be this where where do i have this this uh this note on the next string down one one two three four five here so one two and three Okay, what was the, the, the figure, I, the, 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 the finger tone, semitone, or whatever I should have used here? Semitone, tone, and this same 
stuff, I can bring it right here and then one, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> See? Okay. And what happened next? Tone, semitone. Tone, semitone, because this note here is right here. One, and one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's the same process. Okay, and this is a nice. Uh, it's a nice finger in this one because you don't have to stretch like before with the five, five, five. Uh, help me, oh, uh, five keys, five uh, fret. Okay, sorry. It's all inside four fret. Okay, it's very nice uh, fingering. Okay, and of course, uh, which fingering to use depends on many factors like what we just play, what we're going to play next, or where on the neck we are. We are playing. Uh, if you're playing here or we're playing here, it's quite different. Okay, and as, a, as the same as with this, you have to practice a little bit this scale too, okay? But do it after you learn how to play this. Don't mix stuff. Uh, don't mix exercise. You, you, you're going to make your mind mad about learning it, okay? So go straight with the first, and when you have it, change to the other one. And do, as I told you before, no metronome at the beginning. Say one day or two days, not more. When you, when you got the, the finger in the finger in, in your movement, okay, you can apply. I'm saying one or two days, but if it keeps takes you three or four days to have it in the correct position. Don't go uh, where you can't go now, okay? Let's play it really smooth, okay? You, you, if you play... It's not good. It's not good. You have to play the right way, okay? If you want to learn, otherwise you won't learn it, okay? So uh, we saw how to play with the index finger position. We call it this index finger position because we start the scale with the index finger position and the middle, okay? So. Uh, let me tell you, uh, check this, when we start with the index position, we end up on the, on the octave with our middle finger position, okay? So it's like, sorry. So we know, already know, how to go on, on the single string, you know, C, it's like here. Sorry. So if we start with the index finger position here, we land on the octave with the middle finger position and we, go, we can go on with the fingering we already know on the same string. What happens if I start with the middle, with the middle finger position? I end it with the little finger position. So is there a way I can play 
the major scale with the mid with a little finger position let's see if it is and how it works so uh for practical things i have, i have the same note here and here and i can start my little finger position from here okay i'm going to change the camera so you can you can maybe see better okay so the next note i'm going to play i would i would need to play is one step ahead one tone ahead i'm playing the the root with the little finger so i have to play the second note here so down one one two three four five first note of the scale is here and the second this one could be found here too okay so the third would be here and the fourth tone and semitone between the third and the fourth are here i have the seven here this is the the root i have the seven and the six available to play if i need root second third four five fifth sorry where is the fifth note one and one two three four five same here okay one two three four five six between six and seven i have a tone and between the seven and the octave i have a half tone where is this note in the lower string down one and one two three four five so okay and i'm ending up and i'm landing on the root with my index position and i know how to play the next note okay with the index position so you can it's the same you see this one we saw in the beginning i can have it here i can play it here and i land here okay it's very logic and mathematical okay so uh now you know how to play the major scale in the, all the three positions you need to know and this is the very basic knowledge to master any other scale sorry i'm talking to this camera okay uh so as next step i would suggest you to repeat this entire process with the if, if you really know this or if you uh when you end with this stuff you could start with uh, uh by learning what uh other other scales they call them the diatonic scales uh, and or uh, you can find it by the name uh, the the modes of the major scale as there are seven scales borrowed by the that well they, they they are the same major scale starting from a different point okay it's that that's easy but they sound different okay and you could start checking that them out and uh, listen to them and uh, do the same process we made with the with this new seven scale but until you you've done this stuff stay here and go with a major scale okay then you could learn any other of the hundreds of scale that that that, that, that exists okay um well if you're going to learn the modes uh, of if you are curious about them uh i made a, a video for uh in a nice way to understand them and to see them on the on the on the net the video is is called do you really know how the seven modes sounds 
on base. Try them the easiest way. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going very fast because lessons could be ended here. But if you uh, if you get in here, you deserve some little extra content that uh, that you could probably be interested in in use so how to flawlessly switch from one fingering to another okay now you can change from one finger into another by just sliding your hand a little step ahead or backward or by shortening the fingering so you can reach higher or lower note easily and smoothly change the position of your hand along the neck when needed okay what I mean is uh, when I play the major scale from the finger from the middle finger position, I end up in the with the with the little finger position. And instead of landing here with a little finger position, I can make a little slide with my index when I'm playing the sixth note to play the seven note. So okay, now that, that uh, lets me reach the higher D easily. And I magically change the hand position to the index finger position we made before. When I'm going backward, you know, this, this the index finger position is the one that lands with the middle finger position on the roof. So if I want to switch from the middle finger position to the index finger position when coming back, say, now I'm still using the middle finger position, but if I change it like this, I switch it to the index finger position and the same goes for going back okay so uh well when i start with a little finger position okay i can avoid this stretch okay by uh by sliding sorry okay sliding a little bit from the g to the a okay and ending uh the scale using another fingering and you can mix this stuff uh together okay and usually the, the slides are better are better made with the index finger or with the little finger okay and across one step, one tone, uh, uh, across one tone, okay? Another cool thing you can uh, do to change the position from the little finger position, okay, we saw this. Okay, you can, you can do it in a little different way, that is shorten, this this fingering to this and move a little step back okay instead of going here of course i can play this note here if i need to play this note I, I have to use this fingering probably. But if I don't have to, to play that, okay, I can play this. So you you can you can do this kind of stuff. And another thing you can do is to to change in the middle of doing the the, the the three notes, one, two, instead of playing this, I can go play two notes with a finger and then back on the ne very next note, I, I use the, the, again, the index, so I slide. 
and change to the little finger position. So you can play. You can play all along the neck with very easiness. Okay. Now, I told what all the things that I have to tell to tell you, and uh, have you seen there are an infinity of infinity of possible fingers it changes uh, and it's really up to you to play them and discover new one and choose the more comfortable for your uh, for your fingering for yourself of course every every time you you find a new path for a scale or uh, you have to take some little time to master time is the key okay every one of us have to, has done it and still we do okay so it's the way you learn things in music in, with, with take it slow. The more you, you're learning, the quicker the process, okay? Every master to play has done it, believe it or not. They have been through the same exercise the same struggling and the same stress. Now, after you master the major scale, you can use the same approach to learn any scale, okay? and get its fingering in a very little time because you now understand how it works okay remember to start slow get the finger in your knowledge in your conscious you have to know it how it works where to put the finger and memorize it in your visual memory and start practicing very slow then increase the speed and put the metronome just when you can do it easily okay and try to make the most repetition with no error so you see if you see you can't play at that speed go immediately down five ten bpms down okay and try it again if if you you don't learn to play fast by playing faster okay you learn to play fast by playing it right at the lower tempo if you play it good at the lower tempo you can play it steadily and that's your speed not the one you pretend to play but playing in a wrong way okay being good at playing means you have to play with no error at first trial when asked to if they say okay play the major scale uh, uh, I can play it. I don't even have to think about it. It's like walking. I told you before. You don't have to, uh, okay, what, what do I have to do to go there? Should I put this? No, you just walk. You made it million, zillion of time, okay? So play it slow and remember to correct as soon as you can any mistaken note, any bad sounding one, any, any note that sounds too loud or soft, or the notes you played not perfectly, or you didn't play in time. Anything you can improve. The more critical you are, the better you be, the better you get, okay? So this is the very end of the lesson, but for those who listen till here, let me, uh, I'd love to leave you with a special magic fingering for the major scale that is very fast to remember and very fast to to do and it's slide okay you see uh, start with a c slide one tone and play the other three then go on the next string slide and play the three next string slide and play the other string and then move all the way up to finish, to end the, the, the scale. That's very, very, very useful. And flowness, okay, it's very smooth. You can, you can slide without playing the note with the right hand two times. OK. 
Okay, it's very, very fast. So, uh, if you like this lesson, I hope, I hope it. And if you want me to tell you more about how to play the bass uh, or the guitar, maybe, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, click the notification bell to get notified about the new content and new videos I'm, I'm releasing from time to time. And if you have any question about this lesson or, or any other subject, well, if you want to dive into and you want me to, to explain something, make a video, feel free to leave a comment here in the comment uh, uh, and ask, ask, ask to me, but ask whoever can answer you because only asking you can get the specific need uh, the specific help you need uh, uh, remember asking if you want to learn you have to ask don't just pretend that knowledge comes to you you have to go and ask what wh where should i start from what should i do for this what should i do for that okay so feel free to ask me i will try to answer um to any one of you and hope you enjoyed the lesson and i'm um, leaving you with a mm, with nothing <laughs> i i hope i i leave you with some knowledge more and uh, now i think it's time for you to go to practice okay so see you next time have a nice day goodbye <laughs>